Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here. RetroArch just got a huge update. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, RetroArch just updated to version 1.10. With it comes a bunch of improvements. If you're not using RetroArch version 1.10, I recommend upgrading immediately. I'll leave a link to their change log in the description below so you can go over these changes in more detail if you want. First up here, this is a huge one. HDR support has been added to Vulkan. It's confirmed working on Windows and they say here as well, HDR support for slang shaders has been added. So if you're using the Vulkan renderer, this will be pretty good news for you. Next up here, this is also a huge one. Numerous improvements have been made to Netplay. UPnP support has received a complete overhaul. Relay server should now be fully operational. A new relay server has been added in Singapore to help out users in Southeast Asia and bordering countries. So if we take a quick peek here at the Netplay features, they say text chat, host ping limiter, client ping counter. Netplay Relay, new relay system is now functional. The Canadian server, this one hurts a little bit, uh, the Canadian server was replaced in favor of an Asian one. Also, custom relay server support, a warning will now be shown if your room is not connectable from the internet when announcing to the lobby server. And that is kind of nice. It'll solve a lot of issues. Uh, Netplay fixes, many Netplay fixes and improvements. You can filter out rooms that are not compatible with RetroArch's Netplay, display a non-connectable tag to non-connectable rooms. And LAN rooms now have their own refresh button, no longer mixing together with internet rooms. Now moving on here, and I'll show you this live in RetroArch in just a second. But the XMB menu now has a new optional effect to hide menu items that are near the edge of the screen. Very similar to the original XMB. That gets a big thumbs up. You can adjust the fade effect to your liking if you want it to fade out more items on screen. The new setting is called Vertical Fade Factor and I'll show you exactly where it is. Now, just a friendly heads up here, if you're doing a fresh install of RetroArch and you get this message, just click more info and then click run anyway. You should be absolutely fine. So here's RetroArch up and running, and the very first thing I recommend doing is just double checking to see what version you're currently using. For me, it's version 1.10. You can see it right at the bottom left-hand corner of the screen. If you're using a previous version of RetroArch, you might need to update it because what I'm about to show you won't be available on a previous version. To see this new menu in action, click Settings here, scroll down to where it says User Interface. And from here, by default it is set to Ozone, you will need to change this to XMB. And then from here, Reboot RetroArch. Once you've rebooted RetroArch, you should be greeted with the classic XMB menu. From here, navigate to the Settings menu and scroll down again to where it says User Interface. And from here, go down to Appearance and hit Enter. A little ways down this menu, you'll see something that says Vertical Fade Factor. It's currently set to 100, and this is where you can play with it to change it up a little bit. If I increase this here, it'll start fading out absolutely everything below it and above it. And if we get above 300, I think it resets and goes back down to zero and you can see absolutely everything with no fading. Personally here, I'm not the biggest fan of the XMB menu. I do prefer the Ozone menu, but if you like using the XMB menu, I think having this cranked up to 300 here really makes things a lot clearer. Now checking out HDR and Vulkan is also simple and straightforward. Go to settings here, go to drivers. By default, you're probably not set to Vulkan. So you'll wanna change that video driver from whatever it's set to, to Vulkan. And then from here in the settings menu, if you go to video, it should show up here to enable HDR if your monitors are compatible. I have three monitors and none of them have HDR and it's not showing up in this menu. So yes, while HDR is nice, you must have the hardware to be able to support it. And last up here, if you're using RetroArch on Xbox, you have not been forgotten about. There have been a bunch of improvements and you'll definitely want to upgrade. A bunch of improvements and a bunch of bug fixes. So if we take a look here at a couple of them just to highlight, uh, we can see fixed content over four gigabytes, fixed scanning for playlists. And if I go down here, it says make resolution switching automatic and fix angle output issues. On top of that, it says set resolution based on display resolution auto 4K. So this might be something you want to check out. At the end of the day here, I'm really excited about these improvements and I think RetroArch took a big step in the right direction. Improving Vulkan is amazing and not forgetting about Netplay. Improving Netplay gets a massive thumbs up. Netplay is becoming more and more popular in today's day and age, and the fact that RetroArch is enhancing it is amazing. 
Anyways, that is all I've got for this one. Short, sweet, and to the point. All stuff and no fluff. Let me know your thoughts about version 1.10 in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts about these updates in the comments below, and let me know your thoughts about RetroArch in the comments below. If you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Thank you everyone, take care.